Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with another tutorial for the Fairy Magic Journals. I probably noticed something a little bit different here. I'm going to be working with some magical powders. These are from Lindy's Stamp Gang. I've had these forever and I haven't really used them very much. I noticed there's not much in here. I might have to get a different color, but they are so incredibly messy. So I've put a um, towel down that I use for coffee dyeing and uh, so I can protect my workspace. I also tucked it up. I've got shelves right there that have drawers in them and so I tucked the, the, the towel into the drawers so that I don't get everything so disgusting. But I do need to grab my water bottle as well. So I also have my um, Tim Holtz sprayer. So what we're going to be doing today is making some some tabs for the fairy journal. So I thought, wow, what fun would it be to make um, mixed media kind of grungy tabs for this these journals. So I did realize I did not grab a stamp. I do want to do some background stamping on here, so I will do that in a moment. But I've got a variety of dies. I'm not going to just do straight up regular tabs like this. I'm going to do a bunch of different kinds of shapes and just really go to town on this. So I'm going to set these aside because we don't need them yet, and we don't need this yet. This is I'm going to put my powders in here and mix them in here um, just for ease of use. I've got some brushes, a couple palette knives. We will be using my Crackle Glaze from Deco Art, and um, I've got a couple of fluid acrylics just because I like the permanence of these. So I'm not sure exactly where or how I will use them, but I have them out. My favorite raw umber and sap green hue. I'm going to set those aside as well, and then these are the magicals. I'm just going to put them to the side here. I am going to just pause for a quick second. My apologies, guys. I need to grab some stamps. Just a moment. Okay, I just realized I, I reorganized a little bit of stuff in here. So I have a drawer right there, right by my left side, that has my most used background stamps. So I'm going to just go ahead and use these. I am going to grab my black ink. I am using archival ink from Ranger because it's permanent and I don't need to worry about it running or um, being moved in any way. So I've got two sheets. I'm actually using watercolor paper because I want that sturdiness for these tags because sometimes when you do mixed media um, you can get weaker, weakened places in the base that makes it difficult to have a structurally sound anything. So I'm going to go ahead and set this one aside while I stamp on this one. Um, it's going to be challenging because I just created a soft surface under here which is uh, going to be going to be interesting but let's go ahead and get going. So I'm going to start with doing the numbers. This is just I believe this is from Bow Bunny um, and you can see it got melted because my stamps used to sit on a shelf that was close to the heater so um, I've had these forever in a day. So I'm going to go ahead and just do some quick stamping here. Okay, I feel pretty good about that. Let's see if there's anything else I I can't live without over here. So what is this? This is like a crosshatch kind of thing. Let's try it. I don't think I've used it before. Ooh, that's kind of cool. It comes in a it came in a set, so I don't always use everything in a stamp set that I buy. So this is lovely. So I'm going to speed the video up really quick while I do the second um, page and I'll be right back. Okay, I feel like that is um, satisfactory to me. 
I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. I might just leave these gloves on. I'm not sure. Going out of town tomorrow. So this is Monday, April, whatever the Monday date is. Before April, what is it, the 5th? Four, no, it's not the 5th, oh goodness. The 2nd? 3rd? I don't know. Uh, let's see. It is Monday the 3rd. Okay. So I think what we're going to do first is go ahead and... Um, just debating. I, I really love the idea of putting down the permanent mediums first because then I know they're not going to shift at all. But I do need to grab, since I've got my table covered up, I do need to grab something to mix my my glaze. I think I'm going to do a, um, well, nope, we want to do some texturing first. My apologies, guys. I've been zipping around this morning trying to get things done, so I'm a little bit, um, well, I don't need an excuse to be discombobulated, but I am. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and start with some gesso and just get a little bit of gesso texture here in. So I'm going to go ahead and just dip into that and just apply this here and there. Again, not everywhere. We do want some of that, that stamping to show. So... And um, if you do not have gesso, well, for starters, it's very inexpensive um, because you can get an off-brand, you can get it at Walmart. It is a staple item if you want to do any kind of mixed media or texture work. Um, and it has a lot of purposes. So um, I'm using gesso, but you could actually use like um, water, a watered-down acrylic white paint because gesso is an acrylic medium. So... So nothing is going to show through there. So you can see um, the lighter application, um, you can still see some of that stamping through there. So I'm going to set this aside and do the same on the other one. We're kind of going to play assembly line here so that we can be most effective with our time. So I'm going to speed through this really quick, guys. I'm going to put that away. Now I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to go ahead and dry these both before we move along. So I will be right back. Okay, so I'm going to use a paper towel and kind of dab this because I can see there is still some shiny spots and this will actually create some really cool texture because these are my paper towels from, from Costco. So they're fantastic for, oh, I want to turn it the other way if I want that texture. I'm just going to pat it like so. It's going to pick up any heavier gesso and it's going to leave some design behind. We may have to zap it one more time because that's still kind of wet. But we'll, we'll set that one aside and start and do that one second because I did dry this one a little bit longer. So let me just do the same here. I'm just going to leave the gloves on, guys. I hope you don't mind. And that's not because I don't mind, I don't like getting dirty, but I don't want to scrub my hands. I'm leaving in the morning, so <laughs> I'm being a little prissy, I guess. Yeah, that one's better because it was more dry. So that is that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in with... Um, the thing about doing a glaze is you actually need to have some some texture down which I'm really struggling with so I think we'll do our crackle glaze first and or maybe we'll do some crackle paint and then we'll do another layer of crackle glaze my apologies for the change in mind here it's um it happens right Let's see if I can find one that's opened I absolutely adore this stuff so I have a few of these in my in my cupboard because it's a tragedy when I run out I'm telling you because I use it so much. And I have to order straight from Deco Art. That one's almost empty, though. Let's see. Let's see what we can get out of it. Yeah. So, and as usual, all the supplies will be linked. Now, I'm going to try to go over some of the same places I already have white so that I don't cover up more of the, of the words. So I'm just going to do that here. We want some of that background to show. But the crackle paint will give a different look than the gesso, so it's nice to combine them. 
and this is not expensive I think I pay like four dollars for this bottle now granted it's only four ounces but um, it's it's a good it's a good price so uh, because it's an amazing product okay Now, that being said, one could also, in case you don't have this product and you have like a craft level um, crackle medium, which is the kind where you, you put down a layer of paint and then you let that dry. You want it to still be a little bit tacky, not completely dry. And then you go in with a crackle medium and then you go in with a contrasting paint color. So that would also work here. You just have to start with a colored base which I don't have here so I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and dry uh, when I'm done um, applying this I will go ahead and dry it and then I'll be back when all the crackle magic has happened Okay, I will be back momentarily. See you soon. Okay, I think we're ready for the next step. I've got two of these done. Let me just show you a close-up here of the crackle that we're getting. I love crackle so much. I love how like in this area where you can see the black text shining through. I love that. So this one is drier than this one, so we're going to go ahead and start with this one first, but here's the other. This one had some thicker applications, so it's going to take a little bit longer uh, for that to crack, but that's okay. We're going to just set it aside for now. So let's go ahead and do a raw umber glaze, and let me just reiterate why I'm doing that. The reason why is because... Um, the raw umber is in, is in acrylic medium, so once it's down, it's not going to move. And then when I start putting the Lindy's Magicals on top and, and applying water and whatnot, that, that raw umber is not going to be affected. So it might do one, I think I'll do them both in raw umber, it might come in with a little bit of green. So I'm just going to kind of try to bend this. And also the reason why I used the watercolor paper is because I wanted it to be super absorbent and and it is I'm actually loving working with this I'm thinking about adding um, some watercolor paper into my journals because I think it's a great uh, great um, product so I'm just gonna cap oh, that one is empty um, that paint is empty so I'm gonna throw that away I'm gonna cap this up we can move on. So here is my raw umber. I'm going to have to probably grab another bottle, but we're going to go ahead and get this out on my mat or on my plate here. Let me scooch over so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit. And then I'm going to use my matte medium. Um, I usually do use glazing medium, but the matte medium has the same effect. So it's one part paint to two parts of glazing medium. And this basically allows you to apply this medium to a surface, uh, preferably a textured surface in my opinion, because you can wipe it up. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm just going to cover the whole thing because I want this to be grungy. There's a lot of bright colors in these journals and I'm trying to retain that, but at the same time I want the grungy, vintage, outdoorsy look. So I'm probably going to do a little bit of green too. I'm loving this. So <clears throat> which means the the Lindy's powders will not be the um, well they'll they'll still be a showstopper in that they're gonna be beautiful but they're gonna take a back seat to the darker passages of color that I'm going for here for this really grungy look so I should work on a towel more often it's kind of nice not to worry about my table <laughs> There we go. Although I work on a glass mat, so it's never a problem, but I'm gonna go ahead and just get a couple of baby wipes. You could use a wet paper towel as well. And I'm just gonna kind of move that out of my way so I don't put my elbow in it and I'm just gonna wipe. Actually, I think I'm gonna pounce because I wanna make sure that I don't move any of that crackle medium that's maybe not quite dry. So there, oh, this is awesome. 
I never, never get tired of the glaze, you guys. And so we're getting a little bit darker bits where there is less medium, so like over here, and that's okay. <clears throat> oh, I love it, love it, love it. So I'm gonna get, um, just pardon me a quick second, I'm gonna set this aside because I wanna do the same with the green. So I need to grab um, another plate, and I don't care if they mix, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put that plate down and go in with the green. This is Sap Green Hue from Golden Fluid Acrylic. And I'm gonna do the same process. And it will also, this is not my favorite green. It tends to be really, um, really bright and I don't necessarily care for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, it's gonna mix with that brown that's not quite dry and it's gonna mute the, the green down. So I'm gonna just put a layer of this on top as well. And it's gonna leave some of that residue behind as well. Um, I will say that you do not have to have expensive acrylic mediums or acrylic paints like I do. I'm just, I'm a mixed media artist first and foremost. So these are my go-to supplies. You could do this with acrylic, regular craft acrylic paint. So that uh, works just fine. But I use what I have and um, because yeah, that's, that's what I have. But I, I do try to tell you what you can substitute. I have done it with craft, craft acrylics and it's just fine. Craft acrylics are heavier, are thicker than these fluid acrylics, so you might have to use a little bit more of the glaze or whatever you're using, like the matte medium, to actually um, have it be thin enough to do what you want it to do. So, oh, this is gorgeous. Look at that. That green was definitely, and I'm not quite dry there. That's why we're getting that little bit of white bit because we are disturbing that medium, but it's okay. Oh, this is awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same on the other one and I will be back with you in a moment. I'm gonna probably speed it up. I'm not gonna, I may cut it out. We'll see how long the video gets, but you've seen it once, so let's get going here. can probably see I'm getting a lot of lifting of that medium this was the one that was not as dry as the other one so um, and in a normal mixed media project you would probably want to be more patient but because of the project that we're doing I'm not concerned about that I do want to go in with a little bit more brown though to catch some of the texture in the crackle here that we're losing because the green is kind of weird it's just different, so I'm going to go ahead and just get that a little bit more on there and then do another little pat-pat. And then we will take a moment and dry this and come back for the next step. Yeah, that's better. I'll show you a close-up here in a second. We're still losing that, um, that bit there, so I think I'm going to go ahead and let this dry, take a break, and go put dinner in the crock pot, and then I'll be back and we can continue. I want to give this plenty of time to dry. But here's a close-up of this one. Oh, the grunge. Now, if you're not a big fan of grunge, this might not be your jam, but I am. So I will be back when these are nice and dry. Hello, friends. I am back. These are pretty dry. So again, just want to show you the texture. It continues to crack even though I put paint on top, but I just love it. Love, love, love it. I just love the grunge. I love the crackle. So that's that one. And then this is this one. And I love how we can see stamping underneath. So you never know when you're doing 
just um, base stamping uh, what I call like the first layer you never know what's going to show in the end which is part of the beauty and mystery of mixed media in my opinion but I think it's gorgeous so I'm going to go ahead and again one by one I'm going to work on them and as you probably noticed I did um, take my gloves off but my hands clean my my nails clean up beautifully because my nail ladies are so amazing so I'm just preparing a spot over here so that I can place one of these when we're done so over there um, yeah <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and get my little palette in here and I think I want to start with um, the yellow rose of Texas it is my one of my favorite colors from Lindy so I'm gonna put that in the center and uh, well, let me go ahead and just put it right here in front of us I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle all of these out so that we can play with them looks like this one hadn't been opened yet oops it must have been a um, a replacement one this is one of my favorite greens if I recall I, I always oh man that was a lot a lot that is way too much <laughs> oh well I wish I had a little spoon I could like dip and get it out because that would be I could actually use a little bit of a brush so let me try that and see if I can control in fact I'm gonna do that I'm gonna put some of this back in because that is just ridiculous yeah put it in I'm getting some in the yellow but that's all right okay I'm gonna wipe that off because I don't want to get um, that green into the yellow so I'm gonna grab another brush and just put that still a lot but better than it was so I'm gonna put a little bit of this is the um, well this is clam bake beige <laughs> what a silly name I love their product though you guys so that's that I will keep this palette for this purpose I don't know why it's sticking to that that must be wet let me grab another one I go through a lot of brushes you guys so that is the beige I'm putting the lids back on because it's a disaster if these spill um, this is a Thai, Tibetan poppy teal gorgeous color another one of my faves but I think I'm going to leave this palette with this residue in it so that I can continue to use it in the journal because you can reconstitute it simply by um, adding some water. So that is the teal. And so that's that. And then we've got high maintenance of Magenta. <laughs> oh my goodness. Who comes up with these names? I'm just going to kind of wipe this off. Um, it's a dry brush. So. I'm just wiping it off on my towel. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit in there. Again, that's a lot, but this is a color I'm probably going to focus on because of the journal. So I'm just going to wipe that off again on my towel. Cap that up. And our last one is Peony, Peony Scarlet Red, my favorite uh, pink and red in this line of powders. So one could also. Um, use other acrylic paint you don't have to have shimmer pow powders but this is going to give it that magical look that I'm really going for in this journal so that's what I'm using you could also use um, any kind of there's so, so many brands of pigment powders so these are basically just pigment powders essentially so they are uh, it's too too small for me to read but they're a pigment powder and they're water reactive so I'm going to set this over here. Well, let me move this. Let me get some water in these. I'm going to use this other water bottle so that um, I can just pour a little bit into each well. Okay. And then we'll, oh, that was a lot of water. Care, Renee? A lot of water. I won't waste this, guys, I promise. Oh, these colors are going to be perfect. Okay, so... We put cap this back up and I'm going to use the same brush and I'm just going to rinse in between I've got a water cup here so I'm just going to go ahead and mix the teal that was so much powder you guys it's been a while since I've used this product so this was way more than I needed but again I will uh, put it in a safe place so that it doesn't get wasted that's going to be a really pretty green 
I'm gonna grab uh, some paper towels here, guys, so that I can wipe my brush off in between. So I don't go through a gazillion brushes. And then uh, this one is that beige. And so I'm gonna, before I mix the other ones, I want you to see what they do and why they are, ca are called magical. So you can see the pigments that are in each of these. That is what they're made of. They're made out of different pigments which I think is really, really cool. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Okay. Just trying to get those clumps broken up at least a bit. We just got some in our, in our um, beige though, but that's all right. Just mix that in. <laughs> Let's just mix it in then. Okay. <laughs> and then this one. I need to find like a tiny spoon so I could have controlled this because this is a ridiculous waste. I'm gonna have to, I'll have to put some saran wrap or something over it so that I don't, it doesn't get any dust in it. So we're getting some particles into the other one, but again, they're all gonna mix on the beige anyway. <laughs> so it's gonna be okay. I love this color. This is the Peony Scarlet Red. Gorgeous color. So I think I'm going to do two different kinds of um, two colors or like do each of these sheets with different colors, I guess is what I'm trying to say and not very well. Okay, so let's get going here. So I'm hoping that I don't spill this. So I'm moving some stuff out of the way here. There we go. A little bit more room so I can kind of set this up here. I think I'm gonna move the camera up a little bit so that you guys can see a bigger area. Okay. And do I wanna put the gloves back on? I think I'm gonna put the gloves back on, you guys. Kind of a wuss about it today. Just cause, I mean, it usually comes off my nails okay, but it gets under them um, and I just don't wanna go out of town. Looking all yucky. Oh, and I just got a bunch of paint on my glove. <laughs> Still got my, my plates over there from the, the glazes that we did. Okay. Hard to put them on when they've been the other direction, so but we're gonna persevere. Okay, there we go. So let's get this one in screen here. Okay, I'm gonna turn this since we've got most of that in that side, right there. Okay, so what do we want to do? I think I want to spritz some of the areas of this paper because that's going to help this even move better. So I'm going to start with the Yellow Rose of Texas. And I'm just going to apply it here and there all around. And you guys aren't going to even believe what this looks like on the surface. It's absolutely stunning because the colors that are in the pigments all those colors come out when it's on this on a surface so it's really epic but when I use these this product I find this these this powder everywhere <laughs> even when I, I can't see that I got anything off of my area here but sure enough I'll find something I'll find it somewhere so even though this is going on a darker background, we're still gonna see the shimmer, which is why they're so, so magical. That's why they call them magicals, okay? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush, and I'm gonna go in with the, I don't really wanna miss, mix the pink. Um, I'm gonna probably put the pink and purple together, but I think I'm gonna go in with the teal here, okay? Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Once this is dry, I might do some more script stamp stamping on the top of all of this because I think that would be really pretty so that we can see some of that text again. So, oh, it's so gorgeous. Um, so I definitely would not do this technique on like your standard copy paper because it will just break down. It, this is a lot of water going on a surface, so 
it's not my recommendation of course you are free to experiment however you want to but as somebody who's gone there before you might be disappointed another thing we'll probably do when these are dry is we'll go back in with some splatters from each of these colors as well oh my this is even more beautiful than I than I expected wowza 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 okay so that's the green and um, just trying to remember what other colors I had oh and then we had the um, boy which one was the beige this is the beige ish doesn't really look very beige to me but we're gonna go ahead and drop that into give it a really good compliment should be wiping that off before I go back in it so I don't translate colors from the other um, pans here into that color. Oh, this is so beautiful. I think we're going to go ahead and let this dry because I don't, I can't really see more of what's happening here without it, with it being so wet. So I'm going to set this one over here and we're going to go in with the other one and then we'll come back to that momentarily. I'm just going to smooth that out so it's laying completely flat. Oh, so gorgeous in the sunlight my the sun is shining just came out here this morning and or this afternoon and it's shining in okay so this time I think I want to go in with I'm going to start with the yellow again but a little bit um, maybe a little bit less of the yellow and I can use I can mix yellow and pink without getting um, kind of a muddy result um, so I'll probably do that. We're actually going to use most of this Yellow Rose of Texas, so maybe it really wasn't that much. Okay, so let's just call that good on the yellow. And then I'm going to go in with the, um, this is the Peony Scarlet Red, I believe. Oh, look at that color. We need some water. I forgot to spritz this. And I'll show you another technique here in a second. I should have done that with the other one. I might pull it back over here and show you. So we've got all this, all this liquid on here. So we can just tip this and just get it to run where we want it to run. And so it's going to go into that texture, which is going to be hard to see when it's still wet. But trust me, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I'm going to spray this a little bit more, get a little bit more movement down here. Okay, so there's that. We lost a lot of it up here in the top because we, we pushed it down or we tipped it down. So I'm just going to move this around a little bit. And I'm going to go in with a little bit more in this area here because we lost a lot of that. It's so pretty. You know what? I'm just going to I'm just going to throw all caution to the wind and go in with the um, this was the high maintenance magenta and just go ahead and go in with it. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Look at that! Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I am mixing um, colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, but I think in this in this case it's not going to be a problem. So I am going to go in with a little bit more of the pink as well. That's the peony. And just kind of push some of this back because that's getting pretty bold and I, I'm not a big fan of magenta to be honest um, oh Sun just went behind the clouds there we go okay so we're gonna go ahead and let this dry as well and then I'll show you um, when I come back what it looks like so I will be right back after this has had some time to dry Okay guys, so I'm not super happy with this one. 
so I think I'm going to go in with some green. I just feel like it's missing something, but I don't know if you can see that magical shimmer right there in that thing that looks like a hole. It almost looks like the knot in a tree, um, but the, I hope that you guys can, I hope that the camera's picking up the shimmer. It's going to be more pronounced in some colors, like in that area where that little tree knot is. And then up in here is really, really shimmery. And then down here. But I think I'm going to add some green to this. So um, after I show you this, you'll, you'll know why. So look at this. Look at that shimmer. Can you see the shimmer of that green? It's absolutely epic. Absolutely epic. Beautiful. Over here. Look at that green. I think it's needed. I'm going to I'm going to look one more time in my basket. Um, give me just a quick second and see if I can find another green that I'd like to try. Just a moment. So, let me just set that aside for a sec. So these are my colors. So, let's see what else we have. This is Bells of Ireland. That's the same one I'm using. Um, bit of Let's see seagrass green I wonder if that would be good or mission bells brown that might be cool too I must really like I think this is another one oh drop dead gorgeous I don't like that green I remember I remember that my, my mojito green is not a favorite either ponderosa pines I think that's not either I think I'm going to try the missile bells brown because if I remember right it's got some undertones that are pretty cool so I'm going to grab a paper towel so that I can make sure that this is not excessively wet before I go in with some more color. And I'm going to show you, because obviously I put mine in a dish, you don't have to do that. Um, so I'm going to show you what you would do if you didn't want to put it in a dish. So just, and see nothing's coming up, so it's pretty well dry. It just, it just looks wet, I guess, and that's just the shimmer. So epic. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to get a little brush and I'm going to use my brush to get some out on the on the surface here. I might go in with some of that green too. So you can just kind of sprinkle it on. That's how most people use it. But I figured since we were covering such a large area that I'd go ahead and do it the way that I did it. So I'm going to set that aside. I don't think this one needs anything. I'm super happy with it. And I think I'm going to do some stamping on the top, some text, and then I'll call that one done. Moving my phone because this is going to get messy. So it's not as messy when you do it in the dish. <laughs> when you do it on a paper, it just kind of goes everywhere. So I'm just going to spray this and see what happens with that brown. Can we even see it? I may have to get my brush and kind of move it around a little bit. It might not be enough to give me what I want. I think I'm going to need the green. So let's just do it. Let's just not play around here. So I'm going to go in with the green, which was, which one was the green? This one is the, that was the teal. Oh, teal. That's the color. It's not green. It's teal. So I'm just going to go in a little bit with this as well. I think it needs this green because I think it's really earthy. It's mixing a little bit with that brown, which is going to be, which is going to be good. You know, getting a lot of mixing with the brown here because I didn't dry that at all. But we're just going to keep going for it. I'm going to go ahead and get some on here and then I'm going to spray it again. And then I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera and go ahead and spend, get this some time to dry. And then we'll come back and we'll, um, we'll cut these into strips that I can feed into my die cut machine after I take some magnificent photos. So that brown is actually pretty cool mixing with, let me try that color too, mixing with that, um, that Mission Bells brown. Need some more down here. I'm thinking that the color I'm not liking here is the magenta. It's not my favorite color in any form of art that I do. Uh, I just feel like it's not very realistic. I'm loving this. This is really helping it to, um, it's muting it down and it's still going to have that beautiful shimmer, which is going to be awesome. So I love what we have going on over here. I'm not going to mess with that. 
going kind of around that in a little knot. So cool. And I'm not going to mess with this pooling of that green. I think that's beautiful. So guys, I'm going to go ahead again and dry this. Um, and I'll come back when we're ready for the next step. This is epic. I love it. So I'll be back. Okay, my friends, <laughs> this was so much fun. So I am so excited to cut these. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we don't have any trouble cutting because they haven't dried a long time. Like I'm touching them and they're warm. They're not cold um, or anything, but um, we're going to give it a go. So I'm going to get my trimmer out and cut these. I should be able to cut them in half. How wide is this paper? Let's see. Yeah, it's about, well, it's six, it's 12 inches. Goodness gracious, let me pull my cutter out. We're gonna cut them in half because I'm gonna use my big shot, which is, um, we'll, we'll take a six inch, six inch piece of paper. Oh, and I also did the script stamping. Look at that. Oh, man, I hope you guys can see the shimmer because it is what makes this so completely amazing, so. Let's go ahead and trim this off, or cut it in half rather. So I'm gonna go ahead and just line that up to my six inch mark-ish. Okay, I did take a bunch of photos. So this is my own project, so I can use those. I can scan them and, or save them and use them for other things because, yeah, it's just me using product products cut that as well and get this trimmer out of the way and now now is the fingers crossing part <laughs> so here's my big shot um, I'm gonna leave my camera up high because then we can um, we can kind of work on camera with this so I'm gonna go ahead and just remove my top plate and I'm going to go ahead and slide in uh, slide this in so I'm not worried about everything being perfectly straight or whatever oh, we got a little bit of crumbling there probably just where it where it tore so is that gonna fit through yeah so I'm just gonna lay a bunch of these dies on here again I'm not looking for a traditional um, tab now I'm gonna use that one because it's right here in my little hands and so I'm gonna I'm almost feeling like I want to cut this again so I'm gonna just grab my scissors and just cut this so we've got a little bit smaller area to deal with so I'm just gonna cut it there okay that's gonna make it a lot more manageable so let's go ahead and start with now I am gonna pay attention to the text so if text if direction is important I want to make sure that that is going the right way and then we're gonna use uh, we've got another tab, traditional tab one. I'll put that right there. I am so looking forward to upgrading to a electronic machine because my husband just fixed this handle and it's already loose again I'm so bummed okay so let's take it out let's hope that it cut it did yay oh my gosh oh my gosh I gotta get this out of the way come on Karen let's get this over here for the folks to see that one didn't cut. that one had trouble cutting but oh my gosh this is amazing yeah, we got some trouble there, so I'm gonna have to use my scissors to get that one out. For some reason, these ones on the end didn't do so great. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'm gonna just grab my little, where are my fussy cut scissors? Um, hold on guys, let me see if I can find my, my little scissors. I'm not sure what I, what safe and happy place I put them in. Um, well, I just got these, so let's just go ahead and use these. I'm just going to notch that right there. It just didn't quite separate. Look at that tab, you guys. <laughs> Can you guys see the shimmer now? Oh, epic. This one's a little bit boring, but it's still, it's still okay. Oh, we've got a, I guess it doesn't cut that in middle part. So we've got this one. 
this was a win-win situation here. Wow. So this one had trouble, so I'm going to try to pull it without tearing it. There we go. And I'm my suspicion is that's a little bit wet because look what happened here. That's pulling off a layer, so we'll have to ink that up. But look at those. Absolutely. How come I didn't put one there? I don't know. Absolutely amazing. So I'm not going to keep you here for all of them. I'm going to do one half or one piece of the other paper and then I will do the rest of them off camera and show you at the uh, show you the pictures at the end. So let's just do the last one because we're going to use uh, different dies for that. Okay, I could have waited, you guys. I probably would have probably would have been wisdom to have waited a bit longer for these things to dry, but you know, I'm impatient, so I went with it. This is very small, but we'll see what we can do with it. So let's run this through and then I will say goodbye and I'll see you in the next video. See what we got here. I am super excited about this process, you guys. These results were way, way better than I even anticipated. So I'm going to try to pop these out. Yeah, so my mistake here was just not waiting long enough because I'm noticing that as I'm pulling these, it's where there was a little bit of wet paper. So, but look at that tab. It's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. This one. And these ones always cut really well, that shape. And then this one. And that way my tabs will be all different. It's gonna be very interesting. I love that one. Can see that shimmering green and this one just another variation but look at the cracks on that epic okay let's try to get this one out Ooh, this one's stuck big time it's because the paper on the back was wet I can tell you that right now so look at that that was the pink and it is just too wet so um, so note to self and note to you, um, be more patient than I was today and let everything dry because this would have been a lot easier. Um, I'm gonna just trim that off off camera, but I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.